Hello everyone, welcome to Target Focus Life. My name's Steve, and today I have the Browning A5 Sweet 16. So if you're looking for an in-depth and detailed review, you've come to the right place. Let's go! All right, as we kick this review off, I'm gonna go through a lot of different segments on this shotgun. If you're looking for a specific area, whether it's recoil, reliability, speed shooting, specs, trigger pull, any of that stuff, you can check it out in the description down below and jump right to the spot that you wanna see. Now, Browning claims that A5 is the most reliable, fastest shooting, best performing, softest shooting recoil operated shotgun. Yes, this is recoil operated, inertia driven, they call it kinematic drive, which is their term for inertia driven. But yes, it's an inertia driven shotgun. They claim a lot out of this shotgun. Now, this one is 16 gauge. I'm gonna be putting it to the test. If you're gonna call it most reliable, it better stand up to some torture. We're gonna to put it through some torture in this video, so stay tuned for that. Now, the Browning A5 has been around for a long time. In fact, it was invented by John Moses Browning and was in production from 1902 to 1998. And you're probably wondering, well, it's past 1998, you're holding an A5. Yes, this is an A5, but it resembles the old A5, but practically it's a totally different gun. The way it operates, all that went into it, classic look, but everything else is different. Browning again started manufacturing the A5 and in 2016 came out with the Sweet 16. So while it's a historical gun, this is anything but the same as the original A5, other than some of the look. Now the MSRP of the Browning A5-16 is $1,789, but I was able to find it at Reed's, my favorite sporting goods store, for $1,560, quite a bit below MSRP, so I picked one up there, and now I'm just excited to have it in my hands for this review. So now taking a quick look at the specs, obviously, 16 gauge, two and three quarter inch chamber only. It's not a three inch chamber, so keep that in mind. As far as the operating system, it is recoil operated. Kinematic drive is what Browning calls it. Just a fancy way of saying it's inertia driven. Now this gun, when you pick it up right off the bat, you notice like, wow, what does this gun weigh? Five pounds, 13 ounces, but I would say it feels even lighter than that. Just feels great in the hands. Now the length of pull is 14 and a quarter inches. Of course, length of pull is from the trigger to the butt end of the stock, 14 and a quarter inches, and it is adjustable with spacers in the butt end of the stock. So if you need a little longer length of pull, you can definitely increase. It also has shims to adjust the drop at comb and cast. The drop is an inch and three quarter at the comb and two inches at the heel, so it only has a quarter inch drop, relatively flat stock. The Sweet 16 comes with three Invector DS choke tubes, improved cylinder, modified and full. Normally I like to switch out the stock choke tubes for my Carlson's choke tube, but I got the order in a little too late and I had to get out and shoot this review. So this will have to suffice for now, but if you do want to look more into Carlson's choke tubes, you can check the link down below. This specific Sweet 16 is a 28 inch barrel, but there also is options for 26 inch barrels as well. One of the last things I want to look at with specs is trigger pull. What does the trigger pull feel like? Check it for clear. I'm just going to pull the trigger. Not a lot of pre-travel, meaning from when you pull the trigger to when the trigger breaks, it's pretty crisp, but it did feel a little heavy, honestly. Let's put a trigger scale on it. I got my Wheeler trigger gauge, digital trigger gauge, just over six pounds. Six pounds, 0 0.1 ounces, so not as heavy as I thought. It, it felt heavier than that. Five pounds, 13.3 ounces. We're getting lighter. Five pounds, 8.2 ounces, even lighter yet. I'm gonna do one more for good measure. Fourth trigger pull, five pounds, 11 ounces. So I got an average on the four pulls of five pounds, 12.2 ounces. So that's not bad at all. I like triggers, as I say, often between five and six pounds. So that's right in there in the sweet spot, nice and crisp. Next, I wanna take a look at the ergonomics of this shotgun. Ergonomics is all about the look, the feel, the function. In the hands right off the bat, it's got a very comfortable feel. The forend feels great. It's pretty well just U-shaped. It doesn't have a lot of texture to it. It doesn't have a lot of change in the grip. 
I like guns that have a little curve up here on top, really get my fingers in there, but this has got great grip texture. The grip is maybe a little meatier, a little thicker than I'd like, but doesn't feel too bad. Looking at the controls, um, nothing majorly oversized. I'm guessing that was intentional on Browning's part just to keep it looking a little bit more like a classic shotgun. Um, but it's got a nice bolt handle, good texture on it, good design, nice curve, easy to pull back. Bolt release is nice. It has good texture on it again, not too large. The safety is a cross bolt safety on the back of the trigger, which is where it should be, in my opinion. Nice big safety, easy to hit. Trigger guard is uh, generous with the room. Nice big trigger guard, easy to get fingers in there, gloves. The loading port is not beveled out. I love beveled out loading ports, but on a small gauge like this, I'm not sure how possible that is with thin walls potentially to bevel that out. Another part of ergonomics is just kind of the feel and the balance and the mount, right? So this gun is so light, but it's well balanced. It mounts up real naturally for me. If I just come up, I'm looking straight down that rib, the balance point is a little bit more rearward, look at that. That is a very rear balanced shotgun. Man, that just moves nice. It, it, just great in the hand. So I think Browning did a great job with the ergonomics of this shotgun. Fits me very well. I love the way it feels. So the A5 comes in a lot of different variations. I'm not specifically speaking about the 16 gauge, but just the A5 in general. There are shotguns that are Wicked Wing Edition, which is really sweet. I put out a review on the Maxxis 2 Wicked Wing. Make sure you check that one out. Uh, other than that, they have the Shadowgrass, Breakup Country, they have a Stalker, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a black shotgun. And then there's the Ultimate, which is just, again, a fancy way of saying fancy. It's a fancy looking shotgun. I saw that on the website and I was like, I want that one. That one's pretty. And then they have the Hunter and Hunter High Grade. So lots of different variations of the Browning A5. Next, I'm going to take a look at the build quality of this A5. Now, right off the bat, Browning offers a five-year, 100,000 round warranty. This gun will work come hell or high water. That's their terms, not mine. So I'm real interested to put that to the test and see if I have any issues with cycling, shooting the 16 gauge rounds through this. Now, one thing I really like is it has a nickel Teflon bolt. Nickel Teflon is easy to clean and it has an added uh, lubrication basically to it. It slides really nice. It has a chrome plated chamber. It has a Gould trigger. I think they pronounce it gold, but I think I call it a Gould trigger. Looking at this gun, I really like the wood on it. It's got a Turkish high gloss stock on it. It's just, it's pretty. It all comes together really well. I've taken it apart several times, put it together. It is a solid gun. Just, you can tell that it's quality. Browning did a great job with build quality for sure. But enough talking, right? Let's get to some shooting around here. First thing we're gonna test out with the A5 is recoil and reliability. I'm gonna take just a few shots here, feel the gun for recoil and reliability. Okay, well those last two went off well, but you saw I had a cycling issue on the one round. That is very interesting, that concerns me. I am shooting federal game loads, two and three quarter inch, one ounce, six shot. So I wouldn't anticipate any cycling issues. Let's pick up the pace here. No issue shooting fast. That felt pretty darn good. I imagine if I shoot from the hip. Doesn't like to shoot from the hip either. That sort of surprises me. Now, these are one ounce loads, which is pretty typical in a 16 gauge. Let's try it over the head. None of them operate over the head. So what I would say about that is if you're gonna to claim to be the most reliable recoil operated shotgun, you should probably operate over the head. But as of right now, recoil, very moderate. I love how it handled the recoil, felt great taking the shots. But the fact that I had so many issues right off the bat with it cycling, with this is a gun that's been broke in, shot, cleaned, recently lubricated about 20 minutes ago, and it's still having issues cycling. So that concerns me a little bit. Let's break it down. Browning A5 is inertia shotgun. Kinematic, if you want to use Browning's terms. 
That just seems like a weird term. Four end cap off, that was simple. Barrel and four end come off together. Bolt handle, bolt, two pins, as most Browning and Winchesters have. I love some of the inertia guns that have just the one pin, makes it even a little easier. There we go. This gun isn't even that dirty, which makes me question why I was having cycling issues. Let's slap this back into place, throw her back together. I do love inertia guns for how simple they are. There we go. Bolts going in. Sometimes it can be easier to put the bolt in before the trigger group because that bolt has to go into a plunger. Feels like it's in there. Yes, it is. Bolt handle, barrel, and fore end. Bada bing, bada boom. That was fast, and now let's see how fast we can go with some speed shooting. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to my favorite part, and that is speed shooting because I get to pull the trigger fast, I get to shoot a lot, and I get to try to beat my best times. So let's get things kicked off. We go with three clays. I have to shoot them with individual shots. It's on the clock. Let's see how fast the Sweet 16 will shoot. There we go. Not bad. First run right there. A 137. Took me 0.95 seconds to get on the first one. Not terrible. I can speed that up a little bit for sure. And then I had a 0.22 and a 0.20 split. Not terribly fast. We got to do better, guys. Let's go. Woo, baby. A 134 on that one. Put, took me 0.94. I had a 0.21 split and a 0.19 split. <sighs> Ever so slightly faster. One, two, five. I would be lying if I said that came easy and that that came quick because it did not. I had to do that over and over and over. I had mismounts, which is normal with the new gun. I'm not used to it, the balance, all that stuff. But quite honestly, the biggest hang up that I had was simply the trigger, which is interesting because it's not an overly heavy trigger, but I would get up there and I have muscle memory from speed shooting, right? I would get up there and I'd start to pull the trigger. I would expect it to break and I was letting off. And so there was something that wasn't jiving well with this trigger. I had a lot of pull, let off and no shot. I did have a few cycle issues. That barrel is extremely hot because I've been shooting nonstop for about the last 20 minutes. If you look around at the ground, you'll see lots of empty 16 gauge hulls. So I have put this sweet 16 through some paces. I'll tell you what, I've hunted with this shotgun. I quail hunted down in Georgia. In fact, there's a video about it. You can check that out. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed shooting it. I've enjoyed hunting with it. It's a lot of fun. It's a beautiful gun. The cycling issues concern me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I want to love this gun, but those cycling issues, they happen a little too frequently. I've tried it with different ammo. Uh, this is all new ammo from Federal this year. Shouldn't be issues. I tried it with some different stuff last year, had a few issues. So a little bit concerning there. But other than that, this is a beautiful shotgun by Browning. It brings back a lot of nostalgia, even though I wasn't around for the much of the original A5s, they're beautiful guns. I hope this review was helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, it's only those targets that you're laser focused on that you're gonna hit. So live target focused. See ya.